Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to PHC 502 Respiratory, Renal System and Pharmacotherapeutics. In this week lecture, we will learn about the pharmacotherapeutic management of respiratory and renal diseases. Here is the learning objective of today's lecture. At the end of the lecture, you should be able to identify the risk in asthmatic and CKD patients. Besides that, you need to be able to screening and early detection of asthma and CKD patients. As well as, you need to be able to optimize the pharmacological treatment of asthma and CKD to prevent the progression of acute exacerbation or end-stage renal failure, respectively. For pharmacotherapeutic management of respiratory diseases, we will do some revision using the TEST-1 case study as an example. Before we go further, this is the basic thing as a pharmacist need to do when dealing with any patients. First of all, we need to do the assessment. For the assessment, we need to ensure all the drug therapy is indicated. All the drug therapy is effective and safe to be used by the patient. The second thing, we need to ensure that the patient can and will comply with the instructions that have been given to them. Besides that, we need to identify any drug-related problems to do the further actions. The second part, which is the care plan. We need to resolve any drug-related problems that has occurred. We need to make sure to achieve the goals of the therapy and prevent any drug therapy problem. And the last part is the follow-up. We need to record the actual patient's outcomes and evaluate the status as progress in meeting the therapeutic goals. And besides that, we need to do the reassess for any new problems that encounter during this part. This is the case study that you have already answered in the test 1. Let's recap back. Madam Ho, a 35 years old housewife, which high about 160 cm, attends the RM Tech clinic due to asthma. She claims to be well previously, and asthma attack was seldom. She adheres to the prescribed medication and carries the inhaler when traveling or when leaving the home. However, she feels hazard by the prescribed treatment plan. Her current medications are MDI Sabotamol, 200 microgram when needed, and Simicot Tumbiohela, which are the combination of the Budesonide 80 microgram and Formaterol 4.5 microgram by taking one puff twice daily. Her personal health diary, as in the table, at the last RMT visit, which is on 27 July 2020, her recorded best peak expiratory flow was 294 liter per minute and variability over 2 weeks was 17.9%. So the first question, what is the maiden whole current disease status? To answer these questions, you need to evaluate her lung performance. The first step, you need to revise back her expected peak expiratory flow rate, which using the, her age and height, you can see that 301 liter per minute. The second step, you need to calculate the current average peak expiratory flow rate, as shown in the table here. And when you calculate, you can get a 281 liter per minute, which is lower than expected peak expiratory flow rate. And the third step, you need to calculate the variability over two weeks. So, by using these equations, you will be managed to get the variability about 30.25%. To answer these questions, you need to compare her current visit and the last visit on 27 July 2020 with the therapeutic goals. As we mentioned previously, 
the expected peak expiratory flow rate was 301 liter per minute. Her last visit on 27 July, her PEF was 294 liter per minute and the current visit is 281 liter per minute. You can see a gradually reduction day to day on her peak expiratory flow rate. When comparing the variability over past two weeks, which our goal is to make sure that less than 200, less than 20% variability, her love visit on the July was 17.9%, which is achieved the target goal. However, in this current visit, her variability over past two weeks is 30.3%. The answer for this question is she is showing a decline in health performance as compared to the last visit. As you can see in the table here, she is complied to the treatment plan, which is she took the Simicot every age of single day. Simicot is the drug that used to prevent from acute exacerbations. However, she has not achieved the therapeutic goal. For Madam Ho medication adherent test, she actually scored 7 out of 8, which can indicate her as high adherence to the treatment regime. Refer back to the Morisky medication adherence scale, you can see that the only one point her loss was at the question 7 which she feel has a about sticking to prescribed treatment plan. For the question number two, which are the assessments should be recommended to improve the quality of life of Madam Ho? The answer for this question is spirometry test, asthma control test and inhaler device technique assessment. The MMRC or Modified Medical Research Council Dyspnea Scale will use only to the COPD patient. What are the best care plans for her? Before we do the adjustment on her treatment plan, it is important to assess her inhaler technique and adherence toward the medications. It is no point if we do the step-up approach and at the same time, the patient has wrong inhaler technique or did not comply to the medication prescribed to them. Since Madam Ho was complied to the medication and has right inhaler technique and at the same time has not achieved the treatment goal, we can suggest to the physician to stepping up her current treatment. Currently, she is on low dose Simbicot tubohaler as controller medication. Simbicot is the combination of the budesonide which is inhaled corticosteroid and formaterol, which is long-acting beta agonist. We might suggest to the physician to increase the dose of Simbicot to medium or high dose. The answer for this question is to increase the Simbicot tubular dose from 84.5 microgram to 160 over 4.5 microgram. We can't continue her current medication since she has not achieved the therapeutic goal. We are not suggest to add thiotropium because she is on the preferable controller, it's not the other controller. We cannot change her controller medication from the Simbicot to the easy inhaler because Simbicot is the combination of the sonar and formaterol. Meanwhile, the Easy inhaler is only on the budesonide corticosteroid drug without the long acting beta agonist. This is the step down approach. For the last question, which is the written asthma action plan? As a pharmacist, we need to educate and encourage asthmatic patients to refer their WAAP during the acute attack. The written asthma action plan, or known as WAAP, can be divided into three zones. The first zone is the green zone, indicate that they did well in the treatment, which no cough, 
with chest tightness or shortness of breath during the day or night and she are able to sleep well at night and can do usual activities or she can refer to the PEF value that she recorded every day which in between 80 to 100 percent of personal best. In this stage she need to take her controller medication which is typical to be healer as usual. The second zone is the yellow zone referred to her condition is getting worse due to calf with chest tightness or shortness of breath or she wake up at night due to asthma symptom or can do some but not all usual activities or she having cough or flu. She also can refer to the PEF value which dropped to 50 until 79% of her personal best PEF value. So in this zone, she need to take her reliever medication which is subutamol for one hour. If the symptom persists after one hour, she need to start tablet prednisone which usually we give them six to eight tablets per day for five days. And the last zone, which is the red zone, when her symptoms are worsening, her calf with chest tightness, shortness of breath, and cannot do usual activities, or she keep using the reliever frequently, which every two to three hours or more than egg puff a day, or her PEF value drop less than fifty percent of her personal best. So what she need to do? She need to continue using her reliever medication and start prednisone now and make sure do not take more than 10 tablets in one day. So to answer this question, we need to refer back the Madam Hove PEF target which was 301 liter per minute. So once we calculate the 80% and 50% value of the PF target, indicate that 80% is 241 liter per minute and 50% of the PF target was 151 liter per minute. So the answer for this question, she need to use spacer during asthma attack and to start taking two tablets of 5 mg prednisone daily for five days when the asthmatic system persists after one hour and the PF less than 240 liter per minute. And the other, she need to take another tablet of 5 mg prednisone, which is the maximum dose is 50 mg per day and go to the nearest hospital immediately if the system persists or the PF value is below 150 liter per minute. Let's move on to the second part of the lecture, which is the pharmacotherapeutic management of kidney diseases. In this part, we will focus on the chronic kidney disease. Based on the United States Renal Data System Annual Data Report in 2018, reported that Malaysia is the second fastest rising kidney failures globally. The prevalence of chronic kidney disease in Malaysia was 9.1% in 2011 and up to 15.5% in 2018. Based on the Malaysian Dialysis and Transplant Registry reported that 7,967 new patients received dialysis in 2015. And by the end of 2016, there were 39,711 patients on dialysis. If the present trend continues unchecked, the number of end-stage kidney disease patients is estimated to reach 106,000 in 2040. This burden will cause the healthcare system as reported that the total annual expenditure of end-stage renal disease by the public sector has grown double within a span of seven years, which from 
572 million in 2010 and up to 1.12 billion in 2016. This is the case study that we will use to discuss in this week lecture. Madam SS, 42 year old Afro Caribbean woman, presents to her general practitioner with six week history of headache and lethargy. During examination, the following is noted. In her dipstick study, she is positive on the proteinuria. Her blood pressure was 180 over 105 mm mercury. Her serum creatinine level was 365 micromol per liter and the serum ura was 15.8 millimol per liter. Her albumin creatine ratio or ACR is 15 mg per millimol. Her weight was 98 kg and high 180 cm. Madam SS was prescribed with nifedipine 30 mg once daily and enalapril 10 mg twice daily to treat his hypertension. After one week of the treatment, his BP was still only 150 over 85 mm mercury, but the patient was complaining of very swollen ankles. He also mentioned that he has developed a persistent cough. These are all the risk factors in developing chronic kidney disease leading to end stage renal failures, which are diabetic patients. Hypertensive patients, patients who has heart problems or stroke, obesity patient, or any of his family members developing chronic kidney disease, smokers, and aged more than 65 years old. The first step, we need to evaluate her renal profile by calculating the estimated glomerular filtration rate, either using 2009 CKD EPI creatine equation or Cockroft Gold creatine equation. In the latest guideline, they prefer to use the 2009 CKD EPI creatine equation. In this formula, we need to know the serum creatine level in milligram per deciliter. Besides, we also need to know the patient's age and gender. Since Madam SS is a female, her K value should be 0.7, while the alpha value will be negative 0.329. For Cockroft Gold Creatine Clearance Method, the serum creatine level should be in micromole per liter. Before that, we need to calculate the BMI of the patients to know whether she is more than 25 or not. If she is overweight or BMI more than 25, we need to calculate the ideal body weight for these patients by using this formula. Adjusted body weight will be used if the patient's actual body weight more than 1.3 times from ideal body weight. Let's see how to use this formula. For 2009 CKD EPI creatine equation, first of all, first of all we need to calculate the serum creatinine divided by the K constant value. From the case study, we can see that the Madam SS serum creatinine value in the milligram per dl was 3.45 divided by 0.7. The answer should be 4.93. This 4.93 will be put in the equations to choose the minimum value and maximum value compared to the one. That's why for 2009 CKD EPI creatine equations, we use that 141 times with 1 power of negative 0.329 times 4.93 power of negative 1.209 times 0.993 power of 42 times with the 
constant value which she is female type with 1.018 and she is black so time with 1.159 so the answer should be 18 milliliter per minute so this is her EGFR using the 2009 CKD EPI creatinine equation Using the Cockroft Gold Creatinine Clearance Method, you need to use the serum creatinine in micromole per liter. Before that, you need to calculate the body weight, ideal body weight, and adjusted body weight if the ideal if the actual body weight more than 1.3 than ideal body weight. So her BMI was 30.25, which reflects that she is obese patient. And for ideal body weight, we can calculate that her ideal body weight should be 70.8 kg. Comparing the actual body weight with ideal body weight by times the ideal body weight with 1.3, you can see that the actual body weight 98 kg is more than 1.3 ideal body weight. So that we need to use the adjusted body weight as shown here. It's calculated that adjusted body weight was 81.68 kg. So this adjusted body weight will be used in the Kokorov Gold Creatinine Clearance Equation. Put it in the value, in the formula, you can calculate that creatinine clearance for this patient using the Kokorov Gold Creatinine Clearance was 22.81 ml per minute. After you calculate the estimated glomerular filtration rate, you need to classify this patient with using the kidney disease improving global outcome staging. There are five stages for this chronic kidney disease. Before that, the prognosis of chronic kidney disease is based upon four factors, which the first one, the cause of chronic kidney disease, as mentioned previously, the GFR category, albuminia category and other risk factor and comorbid conditions. The five stage depend on the calculated GFR value. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 and stage 5. Stage 1 reflect that her kidney is a normal or high function which the GFR value should be more than 90 mL per minute. If the GFR value between 89 to between the 60 to 89, we can classify the patient to this stage 2, and so on. If her GFR less than 15 mL per minute, she can be considered as stage 5 or kidney failure. So she required dialysis for continuing her life. Classification of CKD can be categorized based upon GFR category and albuminuria category. As mentioned previously, slide, G best GFR category can be classified into five stages, which are G1, G2, G3, G4, and G5, depends on the calculated estimated GFR value. Meanwhile, for the albuminuria category, we can use either albumin excretion rate or albumin creatinine ratio to categorize them as A1, A2, or A3. To identify the prognosis of chronic kidney disease, we need to compare her GFR value and the albuminuria categories. The yellow, the green zone refer to low risk to get the chronic kidney disease. Meanwhile, the yellow box refer to moderate risk to getting the chronic kidney disease, while orange color and red or deep red refer to the high risk and very high risk respectively. Based on the calculation just now that we have calculated and also the SCR value, we can categorize Madam SS is a stage 4 chronic kidney disease due to it glomerular filtration rates in the range of 15 to 29 mL per minute. 
Based on the table given here, she is a very high risk in developing any stage renal failure due to categorized as G4 based on GFR category and A2 based on albuminuria category due to ACR value in between 3 to 30 mg per millimole. We need to suggest her to monitor her blood glucose and blood pressure regularly to reduce any predisposing factors that can worsen her kidney function. So as a pharmacist, what is our role in delaying the progression of chronic kidney disease? After we identify the risk of the patients, we need to start or initiate appropriate intervention as early as possible thereby we can slow or halt the progression of chronic kidney disease to end-stage renal failure. Here is our aim. First, we need, we need to delay its progression. Second, we need to reduce any cardiovascular risk that can worsen the kidney function. And the third, we need to manage the chronic kidney disease-related complications. Here are our strategies. First of all, we need to optimize the blood pressure. Beside that, we need to control her blood glucose. The use of renin angiotensy system blockers such as S inhibitor and angiotensy receptor blocker or ARB is useful especially for the proteinuria chronic kidney disease. We need to advise the patients to change her lifestyle, especially to a to stop from smoking, reduce her weight, and control her diet which must low salt diet and low protein intake. And as well, we need to avoid any potentially nephrotoxic agent that can worsen her kidney function. Our first strategy to protect the kidney, or we call it as a renal protection, is target for hypertension and proteinuria patients. Proteinuria is a protein that can be found in the urine. It's an independent predictor for renal disease progression. The degree of proteinuria reduction correlates with the degree of delaying the chronic kidney disease progress as well as the cardiovascular disorder mortality reduction. Any class of antihypertensive agents can be used to control the blood pressure in CKD, but please be, bear in mind that only few have additional anti-proteinuric effect that we can discuss later. Lowering the blood pressure has huge impact on the all-cause mortality, cardiovascular event, reduce the stroke risk and progression of kidney disease. In general, blood pressure target for CKD patients should be tailored based on diabetes status, level of proteinuria, and cardiovascular risk profile. The blood pressure target should be individualized according to comorbidities and age. In general, for hypertensive patients, the blood pressure target should be less than 140 over 90 mm mercury, which we need to emphasize that the systolic blood pressure within the range 120 to 140 mm mercury. In contrast to this chronic kidney disease patient or CKD patients, the blood pressure target should be tight, which is 130 over 80 mm per mercury. So, for Madam SS, her BP target should be less than 130 for systolic and less than, and less than 80 for diastolic. Here is the algorithm to review her medication to treat the chronic kidney disease. Once the patient been diagnosed as a chronic kidney disease patient, we need to identify them whether they are diabetic or non-diabetic patient. For the non-diabetic patient which uncontrolled her hypertension and didn't present any protein in the urine, any class of antihypertensive agent can be used to treat the hypertension. 
However, the choice of class will depend on the patient's comorbidity. S inhibitor or ARB in the tertiary receptor blocker should be used as first line agent in diabetic kidney disease with albuminuria or non diabetic kidney disease with the presence of proteinuria more than 0.5 gram per day. S inhibitor and ARB cover both renal protective and cardioprotective effects. Many clinical, many clinical trials has proved that this agent significantly reduced the progression from microalbuminuria to macroalbuminuria and as well as induced the regression from the microalbuminuria to normal level. However, please bear in mind that there were no benefit of S inhibitor use and ARB use for non-diabetic kidney disease if proteinuria less than 0.5 gram per day. We need to monitor the renal profile of the patient following the initiation or dose escalation of S inhibitor or ARB. The dose of S inhibitor and ARB should be titrated up to the maximum recommended dose to achieve the optimal blood pressure and has the anti-proteinuric targets. Renal profile should be reassessed within two weeks upon initiation or dose escalation of S inhibitor or ARB therapy. We need to reduce or discontinue of S inhibitor or ARB after we excluding any other precipitating factors when the serum creatinine levels remain more than 30% from the baseline or the EGFR reduced more than 25% or the serum potassium is more than 5.6 millimole per liter or we call it as a hyperkalemia patient. Do combination of S inhibitor and RRB is getting benefit to the patient? The dual therapy has this synergistic effect which the additional reduction in proteinuria and decrease the hospitalization for heart failure in both diabetic and non-diabetic patients. However, it does not reduce the mortality and has higher risk of adverse effects such as hyperkalemia, hypotension, and acute kidney injury compared with monotherapy. Hence, this dual RAS blockade should not be prescribed routinely. It may be considered if the patient has non-diabetic kidney disease patient who remain hypertensive and persistent the proteinuria more than 0.5 gram per day and the serum potassium is within the normal range. In clinical practice, calcium channel blocker acts as an add-on therapy to rust blocker in the management of chronic kidney disease. Rust blocker and CCP Combination of rust blocker and CCB is a reasonable and safe approach to optimize the blood pressure control. However, only the non dihydropyridine CCB such as Virapamil and Ditazam and certain subtype of dihydropyridine CCB such as Lecanidipine, Azanidipine, Benidipine and Clinidipine have the additional anti-proteinuric effect. The combination of rust blocker and aldosterone antagonists able to reduce the proteinuria and reduce the blood pressure level. However, for the non-selective aldosterone antagonists such as spironolactin offer many adverse effects such as hyperkalemia and or gynecomastia. That's why we more prefer to use the selective aldosterone antagonists such as iplerenone and finerenone which these two drugs has less or fewer adverse effects. The effect of phenerenone in the urine albumin creatinine ratio depends on the dose itself. Let's discuss back our case study. As mentioned before, Madam SS prescribed with nifedipine 30mg OD. So this nifedipine is a calcium channel broker which is 
dihydropyridine calcium chinobocal, which has been thought that this nifedipine CCB didn't have any antiproteinuric effect. Besides the nifedipine, the metamer SS also received another period 10 mg BD to treat her hypertension. So this enalapril 10 mg BD is an NSAID inhibitor. After one week of the treatment, her blood pressure still 150 over 85 mm mercury, but the patient was complaining of very swollen ankles. He also mentioned that she has developed a persistent cough. From the previous discussion, we already classified the Madam SS as a stage 4 chronic kidney disease due to her GFR value within the range of 15 to 29. Thus, the swollen ankles due to the severely decreased renal function, which the kidney unable to excrete excess fluid that cause accumulation of fluid at her ankle. So that we suggest to change her medication to the diuretics. Besides that, the persistent cough is due to the side effect of S inhibitor. So the patients are the patient is intolerant to the S inhibitor, and we want to suggest to change to the ARP. So as a conclusion, the best medication for her to delay the progression of chronic kidney disease as well as to monitor the blood pressure in the normal range, we would suggest to use the angiotensin receptor blocker or ARP combined with the selective antagonist aldosterone diuretic which is iplerinone. Beside controlling her blood pressure level and Reducing the protein excretion through urine, we also need to monitor the glucose level, which the glycemic control able to protect the kidney. The target for the HbA1c should be between 6.5% to 7%, which this range of value able to reduce the development of micro and macro albuminuria. However, aggressive glycemic control in patients with established CVD increase the risk of hypoglycemia and death due to impaired drug metabolism. The best antidiabetic that can be used to treat the glycemic control is the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 or SGLT2 inhibitors which has been proven to reduce the cardiovascular outcome and have the renal protective effect. The empagliflozin has reduced the incidence of worsening the nephropathy by 39% and the canagliflozin able to reduce the progression of albuminuria. Here is the list of dosage recombination in chronic kidney disease for oral anti-diabetic agents. Let's see here. If the patient on metformin, the usual dose should be 500 to 1,000 mg, 1, mg twice daily. However, if her kidney profile deteriorates, which in the level of 30 to 59 ml per minute, she need to reduce her dosage to 30 to 50 percent or avoid if the glomerular filtration rate less than 30 mL per minute. Even though sodium glucose cold transporter 2 or SGLT2 inhibitor has the renal protective effect, it didn't mean that he can treat this drug can treat the kidney function. This SGLT2 inhibitor should be avoided if the kidney function less than 30 ml per minute. And we need to adjust the dose when the EGFR value within the range of 30 to 59 ml per minute. Besides adjusting the oral anti-diabetic dose 
we also need to review all prescribed medication in these CKD patients, such as lipid lowering agent as stated here. Here is the list of the antihypertensive drug that we should adjust the dose according to the EGFR that we calculated. The only antihypertensive drugs that affected is the diuretics drugs. Try to avoid using the thiazide diuretics and potassium sparring diuretic when the GFR value less than 30 ml per minute. The loop diuretics, rumetanide, frusum, frusamide, as well as the aldosterone antagonist is safe to be used. We should encourage and counsel CKD patients to having the low protein diet. Protein restriction is one of the supportive measures to delay the CKD progression. For the diabetic kidney disease, the protein intake should be in the 0.8 gram per kilogram per day. For the non-diabetic kidney disease, we will recommend them to consume 0.6 up to 0.8 gram per kilogram per day. And for the pre-dialysis CKD patient, which is in the non-DKD stage 4 and 5, we recommend to restrict her protein diet up to 0.3 gram per kilogram per day with keto acid supplementation. The two most common complications for CKD is anemia and chronic kidney disease mineral and bone disorder or also known as CKD and BD. Anemia is defined as a hemoglobin concentration of less than 30 gram per dl for adult males or less than 12 gram per dl for adult females. This is due to this is because reduce the erythropoietin production by the kidney and reduce the absorption of iron. The optimal hemoglobin target in CKD patient is 10 to 12 gram per dl, so that the iron supplementation is necessary to replace the iron stores, and we prefer intraventricular compared to oral drug. Treatment with ESA or erythropoiesis stimulating agent should be commenced by the nephrologist. When the patient has glomerular filtration rate less than 16 ml per minute, they will cause changes in the metabolism of calcium, phosphate, parathyroid hormone, and alkaline phosphatase or ALP. As kidney disease progresses, the renal activation of vitamin D is impaired which reduce the gut absorption of calcium. The low blood calcium concentration stimulate the secretion of parathyroid hormone. As the renal function declines, the serum calcium balance can be maintained only at the expense of increased bone resorption resulting renal osteodystrophy. Calcium level that less than 9.5 mg per dl and phosphorus level less than 4.6 mg per dl must be controlled before initiate the vitamin D therapy. For the hyperphosphatemia patients, we need to restrict the dietary intake of phosphate which within the 800 to 1 gram per day prior considering the use of phosphate binders such as calcium carbonate, magnesium hydroxide, aluminum carbonate and aluminum hydroxide. To treat the hypercalcemia patient, we need to avoid excess calcium administration and vitamin D analog, which these two supplements led to increase the risk of vascular calcification in chronic kidney disease. That's all for today. If you have any inquiries or any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me. Thank you everyone, stay safe and see you in the next semester.